Hello everybody and welcome. We are in Swallowfield, yep. which is in Berkshire. Reading. Yeah. Reading. But a Berkshire, it's a county. Yeah. It's a thing. Um, and we're joined here by the one and only Peter Davis. Say hello, Peter. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, Peter, as many of you will know, is designed by detail. Uh, and we've known each other for really quite a long time. Quite a few years, yeah. Quite a few years. Been a PVD member for a long time. And uh, I want to come down here and just catch up and learn more about Peter. So I did initially quite a lot of searching just to make sure there was nothing sort of nefarious or any criminal <laughs> record or stuff like that. And the answer is, since he's changed his name back from Sandra, we're fine. So, um, starting with the early years, uh, what did you do at college? Uh, I left school pretty much straight, well, uh, I had an apprenticeship already lined up. Yeah. Um, when I left school, uh, at a local company in the village. Cool. They gave me an apprenticeship and I went on a day release. Are oh, you on a, a, a local boy? Uh, uh, Inglefall Green, which right. is, easy way to describe it, uh, Egham, sorry, so it's gotcha. about half an hour drive from here. Pretty posh. Yeah, it's quite a nice area, yeah. near Wentworth, Virginia Water, if people know the area. Um, so yeah, so local company, um, and done two years and trained up as a diesel fuel injection engineer. Diesel fuel injection engineer. I mean, crikey, put a dress on, because that, <laughs> that is cool. I have to, I've got a thing for diesel engines and tuning them and stuff, so that was very, very cool. We would have a serious conversation about common rail diesel injection technologies, yep. um, but this is not the channel for it. So uh, we're going to move swiftly on. You've been motor trade for a long time, haven't you? Broadly Since speaking. I was 16, yeah. Since we were 16. And then, so once you stopped playing around with diesel engines, yeah. uh, what sort of thing did you do? Uh, well, I actually took a five year break and actually run a pub for five years. Awesome. Yeah. Where was the pub? Uh, Staines, Middlesex. Was that any good? It was an interesting five years. Yeah. It teaches yeah. you a lot about business, I imagine. Yeah. Uh, how to deal with people, how to deal with clients, issues you've got with clients. That's the more sort of side that you can bring into your own business. And is that where you felt your interpersonal skills also kind of go up when it comes to customer facing? Um, yeah, it's a little bit different. You're mm -hmm. dealing with people that, you know, different situations, but you're dealing with people that might have a, an issue with the, the product that they bought from you, mm -hmm. either be the alcohol or the food. And then obviously, and when it's a late night venue at one o'clock in the morning, trying to deal with fights or... Drunk people. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's about talking to people and trying to understand their situation, which is very similar what you can bring into into your business when you've got yes, yeah, so car cab is, is pretty much the same. Three o'clock in the morning, yeah. you want to have a fight. <laughs> yeah, although well, you do get people that message you at like silly hours in the morning asking for a That's car true. to be cleaned. But yeah, I mean, we all we all have that. Um, yeah, so I did that for five years and then went actually back to the motor trade. Uh, Were you ever buying years. and selling cars? I can see you being a bit of a car no, dealer. No? no, no. Sold a few cars for clients on behalf mm -hmm. of clients, but no, never. No, code, and dealed. No. No, no, never wheeled and dealed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that brings us, you, you, you were working there, and I remember you were saying that uh, when it comes to car care, you started by just doing some cars for your clients and friends. and Yeah, just bits and pieces at home, own car. Um, we bought my partner a little Audi TT, and mm -hmm. she wanted some, wanted some particular tweaks and done you know, bits and pieces into it, so she wanted the wheels change from plain silver to anthracite so i took those off and done all the brake calipers and cleaned all the arches and mm -hmm. just started getting into doing bits and pieces at home on it for her and then looking after that sort of every week so sort of self-taught in the early days yeah it was all self-taught initially i mean to be fair if you can tinker with diesel engines you've got the technical knowledge that, i think it's know. yeah yeah i've always been in jobs that are to do with hands or you know as a kid involved with stripping and rebuilding remote control cars and all that sort of stuff. So There's very definitely a manicurist joke coming in there yeah. at some point. It would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, then Design by Detail was born, what, around circa 2013? Yeah. Um, and you were mobile out of, a, out of a van? Mobile, yeah, fully mobile. Um, nowhere to work from, never, never did any jobs once I'd gone sort of full-time at home. Mm -hmm. uh, everything was out on the road. Um, did you like the life? Um, Honestly, it's it was probably easier out on the road mm -hmm. um, in terms of the hours that you kept. Yeah. Um, probably, if I was to probably say to someone that profi pro profitability, mm -hmm. you make more profit out washing cars. Interesting. From yeah. Being in a unit. Oh uh, yeah, I, yeah. And that's because you reduced just, overheads or reduced overheads. And I think it was a conversation that uh, was on your last podcast that James was talking about. It's that. It's not a case of that, you know, we are 
we have OCD, mm -hmm. it's about the fact of that it's drawing the line of how much work you put into a car. Yeah. You always tend to end up putting more time into a car. So when you physically break that down into how many hours you spend on it to what you're charging for a customer, mm -hmm. you make more money just by going out and just doing simple, simple. maintenance ballots. And that's easier to control, isn't it? Because you know when you turned up, it's not like here, you can't tell if it's day or night outside. You could happily spend six hours on a car. And I do often find, yeah, yeah, you know, like probably a lot of people do with their units that are self-employed or they're so their own business and their only people. You know, you, you just get sort of, you put your headphones on your machine polishing and before you know it, it's... I mean, I joked last night, I got home at nine o'clock mm -hmm. and I joked like it was an early finish. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a balance, isn't there? Because in, in, when you're running your own business, the idea that you can work from nine in the morning till five at night, five days a week with half a day off at some point during the week is uh, slightly fantasy, really. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not a nine to five job. Yeah, and that's, that's a perk of getting salary. You get people say, oh, I wish I was self-employed. I'm like, I'm not sure you would because no. you've got a ton load more of a responsibility. Generally speaking, it's only you who has the blame if something fails. Yeah. Um, and you don't have that kind of that barrier, that nine to five, and you're always going to get your salary. Whereas when you're self-employed, you have to put more hours in. You yeah. have to put in, you know, you've got much more responsibility. You've got no one else to blame. But at the same time, the rewards can be bigger. Yeah. You, you, I mean, on the whole, you say, oh, they say you don't have a boss if you're self-employed. But actually, you do have a boss. And the, the people who are very good when they're self-employed are their own boss. Yeah. And I don't know about you, I mean, I'm technically self-employed, and my boss is a dick. Yeah, mine's a, a four-letter word beginning with C. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, it's hard because you, from the minute you get up in the morning, you're talking about, you're thinking about what jobs you've got in for the day, or when you finish at night, you know, if you if you want to try and finish for a certain time because you've got plans for the, the evening, then you think about, okay, I need to go in earlier the next morning, mm -hmm. or I need to go in early that day, to make up for the hours that you're missing. Yeah. And it doesn't just stop when you shut the door. You know, you jump in, and, you know, I go in the van, so half the time when I go home, I'm stopping at Spotless, and I'm filling up my van with pure water. Mm -hmm. And then you get home, and then you're looking at your emails that you've had through for the day, or your invoicing. Spotless, by the way, is, is a, uh, they have little sort of depots, I guess, for, for clear water, just in case you thought it was a strip joint or something. <laughs> it's um, where you can get water which has got zero PPM, or yeah. near zero PPM. Uh, for rinsing, so you don't end up with water spots and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just great. You can just let a dark car dry. Yep. And, it, yeah, and a light one, equal ops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Doesn't but, matter. No, but it's <laughs> easier with a dark car. <laughs> um, so uh, you were, you've been here, what, 18 months now in this unit? April 2019, yeah, yes. was when I first opened the doors on it, yeah. And I have to admit, it's looking very smart. Admittedly, a lot of the, the, the storage facility, should we say, is behind the camera. Uh, here you can see, however, we've got some really nice new Swiss tracks flooring, which you got through Elite, didn't you? Elite flooring, yeah. Elite flooring, and uh, you've even got your logo emblazoned on there and stuff like yeah. that. So it's it's very cool. And the nice thing about this flooring is it is how would you describe its draining? I mean, it basically water falls through it. The water goes through any dirt particles would go through it, so it was always looked physically cleaner. Yeah. The water that any water that does go through it will just over a day or so will evaporate but mm -hmm. if you get a big spillage you can just pop the tool in lift the tile up suck the floor suck the water out mm -hmm. pop the tile back down it's so much easier and it's so much warmer to stand on i mean mm -hmm. yeah it's going to be at the point where i'm probably just going to be working in sliders but yeah. it's <laughs> it's definitely warmer especially this time of year than yeah. stood on concrete all day it's got a nice feel as well. It doesn't feel like such a trip hazard as no, well. There's some, no. somewhere it can be. And it's changed your appearance massively. Of the it does. It really brings it up. I mean, it's quite a smart unit anyway. Yeah. But yeah, it does. And um, I don't want to ask you how much it cost, but was it quite expensive? Yeah. It was a, well, there we uh, go. Quite yeah, expensive. Quite expensive. <laughs> That's a guide. Um, and in this unit, what have you, what have you learned? What would you say was the biggest lesson? Somebody who's just going to the unit. I know there are actually quite a few guys who are just going into units. Um, what is the, the, if you had, say, three tips for these people, what would you now, 18 months down the line, what would you retrospectively have done differently or are very glad that you did do? Um, keep your eyes open for the expense. Yes. So you naturally think that when you're going to move into a unit, you can move into a unit and you'll just start work with everything you've got out of your mobile van. Um, you, the expense can get sort of out of hand if you're not careful really. Um, the other things I would say is probably uh, heating mm -hmm. um, and lighting are very crucial, obviously depending on what you're doing, but if you're doing paint correction and stuff. 
Um, well, electricity, and this is another thing. If you're used to just renting a house, and a lot of houses are on, say, uh, water, which is just on a, a set rate, it's not metered. Yeah. Uh, and ditto, even electricity and stuff like that. I mean, most people have now got meters, but you t <laughs> it's very easy to underestimate the cost in a commercial property yeah. of all the different variables. And also, if you're in a shared commercial property, like this is a, a one of a run, there are normally other fees on top of that, which yeah. are for the sort of general upkeep of the area and things. And I suppose insurance is the other big thing. Yeah. Make sure you've got the right insurance. This for is, everything you've got in or it covers everything that you've got in and that's a really really important point i mean from a pbd point of view if you're mobile we would say we need pli and accidental damage uh, to goods worked on which is protecting the customer and then if you're in a unit basically it's the cover of the vehicle while it's in your custody because if you uh shut up for the night and you left a car in and then the unit burnt down or it got robbed that technically is on you yeah and if you don't have either a trader road risk or a vehicle custody then you can be absolutely shafted and a lot of people will go for that and that'll that could be in excess of a thousand pounds easy peasy often more than two or three um they think oh that's quite enough of that but actually we've had quite a few we've had one uh, where a unit burnt down and thankfully had building insurance and that protected him and it affected the neighbor property as well um, but also if your tools get nicked you can't work and so yeah. tool cover is really, really important. And it shouldn't cost that much if they're kept in a building as opposed to in a van, because that's yeah. when they're super, super risky. Um, and the other insurance I do, and I like banging on about insurance, but the other thing is loss of earnings. Because if this place, God forbid, were to burn down or something, you, I mean, you'd just get in your van and keep working, knowing you, but there'd be some people who'd be absolutely hamstrung. Yeah. And, you know, in these days, it, uh, we've already demonstrated with things like lockdown, those who sit through the gaps of support, if you have a month or two without working, it gets very scary very quickly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, insurance is super important. But the overheads, I think we calculated your overheads per hour was something in the region of 15 quid on the basis that you were running eight hour days, five days a week. So if you're running six days a week and doing nine hour days, which is probably more realistic, they'll come down a bit. But that's still quite a chunk of money. It is a big chunk of money, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it's something serious to consider. So we've got, um, consider your overheads, consider your insurance. Yeah and uh be careful about the expense account so to speak yeah because yeah you can sort of get sort of carried away i mean yeah it's uh sat here with a load of painted machines in front of me but, I, uh, yeah, but don't, we'll get don't sort of get caught up with uh having the latest mm. things well really Speaking of that, because the other side is accreditations, and there's a big there's a big debate. You get some people who say, right, I don't need any manufacturer accreditations, I'm fine. But the answer is, if you want to apply the best product available by a certain manufacturer, normally you do have to have some form of accreditation. Yeah. Whether that's just paying money, promoting them on Facebook, or going and actually getting a proper test and training on the on the kit, you generally have to do that. Yeah. And then within that, you've got lots of brands who offer, you know, as I say, on the spectrum, but you've got a pretty strong suit. Your IGL. IGL Kenzo, so master, yeah. Which is Kenzo master, which uh, he had to do a taekwondo session on that. It was weird. <laughs> Why did it naked? Um, and then you also are Fain Lab, which is uh, yeah. Mark. So Fain Lab is famed <laughs> for their self-healing. Yeah. Um, now, there are various others that have kind of erred about the self-healing side. I think May Vinci and stuff have mentioned it. But actually, in terms of day-to-day -day use, you could argue to an extent that a lot of ceramic coatings are, to an extent, self-healing with a bit of heat. Yeah, some of them say that they have self-healing properties but mm. they can't guarantee it so they don't promote it yeah whereas fain lab have and they have yeah. for quite a few years as well self heal and heal light have got healing properties yeah yeah so that's kind of cool um your um what's the word is it flirting no is it it's trying out experimenting evaluating uh, the new samsung range yeah so i've been using samsung for quite a few months now with sam yeah yeah and uh, so that's run by somebody called sam hogan uh who uh, i know a bit and he's a lovely chap he's he's uh, got a background in grease lightning and various other companies like that so he's been in the car trade for a long time in the car care trade for a long time but not necessarily in our little avenue of it but that's a new exciting brand that's been coming out recently um and what else was there another one uh, the other one that titan. i use is titan yeah titan now tell me titan are relatively new on the scene and yeah. then, uh, you know in my position we're regularly getting um sort of oh we're the new latest and greatest this that and the other so you kind of become a bit immune to it and then when you get phoned up by somebody not that titan have but when you get phoned up by somebody saying look we've got the best coatings in the world they're all done this we make them at home and uh you know they, you, you get a little bit cynical yeah however the first i heard of titan was actually mark farrell yeah of okay. morales detail yeah. and he said i'm using these and uh, you know mark a bit yeah he's he was like, igl yeah he's igl yeah and he was he's uh hey but i've been using these I've you know they're really good i'm not going to do his accent because he'll just come up and punch me at some point but um he he was really behind them i was like hang on if mark's behind them that's a good sign and then i hear you're on them and i've quite a few other people who've been using it. everyone who's been using them 
are kind of on, on their game, so to speak. Yeah, so the, I think it's the same as like a lot of coatings. Um, their Hyper Quartz one, which is their entry level coating, mm -hmm. super easy to use, no aggro in terms of application and removal. Um, hydrophobic properties are amazing and the gloss is really good on them. Mm -hmm. um, same as every other coating, the sort of higher you go up the range, pretty much, um, apart from IGO actually, the harder it tends to be in terms of mm -hmm. either application or removal or temperatures. Yeah, Kenzo is really easy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Kenzo is super easy. Uh, details seem to love applying the Kenzo. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like uh, Vulcan, for instance, which is their like rubber membrane coating. So mm -hmm. I put one, I put that on a horse box just recently for a client. Um, it's basically on and off straight away. If you don't yeah. take it off straight away, you're in a whole world of pain. Yeah. Um, so that's super small sections. Um, their wheel coating pyro is a really good coating. Mm -hmm. That has to be infrared cured as well on the wheels. So they, you know, again they've chosen a select amount of people, and at the minute they've closed all their accreditations, mm. so they're not taking on any more people. Which is interesting. There are different different approaches to it. I mean, you've got. I was amazed to learn AutoSmart, for example, their matrix coating. Yeah, they've got. I last count, it was over 150 people, and that's been less than two years, I'd yeah. say. I mean, we we tested it in the last issue, um, and it was just amazing to have built up a network. You know, of that, of quick. that quick. On the one hand, sign of great success. On the other hand. I don't know, my, my cynical a angle is, is a bit My cynical angle would be is the amount of people and who's actually applying it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If they've got that volume of people on already. I mean, I only know of one person that's mm. got it. Yeah. No, I, I looked online and there was just so many, so many, so many people. But um, by the same token, you get other brands that try to be very elitist and they're like, only if you're friends can you get in and you have yeah. to know somebody to be somebody. And that sort of thing suddenly grates on me because I feel that you should, it should be a meritocracy. You should, you know, by all means control the distribution of these products, yeah. but based on training and assessment and some sort of accreditation, not how many Instagram follows you've got or, yeah. you know, anything like that. So anyway, that's, that's a debate in itself. Yeah. Two more things I want to talk about. One, we've got a very pretty Range Rover and we've hidden the number plate by means of parking it this way around. Um, and this is an SV supercharged. SVR, yeah. SVR supercharged. 70 plate. Brand 70 new. plate. It's very, it's very shiny already. You haven't even put coatings on yet. You've no, just, no coatings. It's yet. been polishing. Yeah. And what's interesting is um, when it comes to new cars, as anyone in the trade knows, a new car coming from the factory once it's sat on the forecourt, once it's been transported, is never pristine. You don't, you know, it, it always needs a bit of work. But you were saying this one ain't particularly bad. No, I mean there was a few scratches and general wash marring, but mm -hmm. because it's quite soft, it's Centauri black. It's uh, yeah, they're quite, they're quite a joy to work with. To be honest, it's not sticky paint. Mm -hmm. um, so it's correcting quite nice, just to be a single stage. And you're going to IGL this one, Quartz? This is Quartz Plus, yeah. Quartz Plus, which is what, mid-range? It's the, yeah, it's second highest coating. Second highest, Kenzo, so I it's guess. three, uh, yeah, Kenzo's yeah. now actually a five-year coating. They've tweaked it and added graphene into it. Oh, it's got graphene in it? Yeah, okay. to help aid against water spots. Interesting, interesting. Well, graphene is, is again a very pol yeah. polemic topic, and I don't know. There's, there's been around for a while, but yeah. everybody seems to be getting into it. Well, carbon's been around a while. I mean, yeah. it's it's, um, it's one of those things. I think there's, um, you know, it comes up, and then those who don't have graphene products immediately make sure that it gets poo poo very very quickly. But then those pushing it will also say that it's, you know, the the next best thing. Yeah. So it's a tricky one. I, I mean, I think the, the good thing is with IGL is that they've realized i think that there was i think it's fair to say that there was a they have had some issues with water spotting on dark mm -hmm. dark cars uh, with kenzo so they've gone away they've looked into you know what they can do to aid it so they've mm -hmm. tweaked it changed the formula and they've actually moved it from a four-year coating to a five-year coating so which is quite good then because the people that are then kenzo approved and because there's different levels you can be quartz plus mm -hmm. accredited um, not everybody's a Kenzo master that's on uh, in the IGL family, but if you are a Kenzo, so then all of a sudden you're making a jump from a three-year product to a five-year to a five -year yeah. product, which actually gives a massive difference. What do you have to do to become a Kenzo master as opposed to a uh, Yeah, it's again, it's a, a day training mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you can, you're compliant, you can do what you want to do, they do check you out. 
um, days training, using all the products, supplying all the products, understanding how the products work. Mm. And I think that's you, one needs to kind of qualify that side. They don't say, oh, detail for a day, and then suddenly you can apply it. They're, they're looking at the years of experience and, and skills that you've built up over that time, yeah. the actual training specific to this product. So it's like, for example, the best comparison I tend to make is a type rating on aeroplanes. So you can get a license to fly an aeroplane, but then you need what they call a type rating for each different type of aeroplane, yeah. so you know where the different knobs are, basically. <laughs> um, and um, that is, uh, that's the kind of thing with the, with the ceramic side. So it is, it's good to see it's, you know, actual, the same. Hands they yeah. look at that you have to have so many years trading mm -hmm. before they'll even consider you. Yeah, and even years trading. I, again, I think they look a, at five. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good initial point. But I found that when we were going through, you know, accrediting people, the association and stuff, is uh, you've always take things with a pinch of salt but as a, as a baseline you say somebody's been trading for five years that's the place where you, you that opens a conversation and then yeah. it's worth doing it and bear in mind how many people try to apply to these things i mean thousands for yeah, vein lab, vein lab. I, I almost all i hear are people who applied and didn't get a response and it's like yeah. oh they're not responding i'm sitting there thinking they probably just just <laughs> didn't want to respond to you <laughs> but how do you find a delicate way of putting that um so moving swiftly on um you have uh, I mean, obviously far from perfect. I've seen there's a, an Audi A1 outside with crushed, crushed with my suspension. Car. That's pretty, pretty poor for a man. Um, but uh, we're going to talk about this one because I secretly really like this. It's terribly wasteful, completely unnecessary, and does not make you into a better detailer. No. However, I wanted to do it and something different. I, exactly. like, I like to be different. He likes to be different. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So we're going to start from the right here. We have. Oh, Look at this. This is modern. Hang on, I was going to say it's modern yellow, but is it, it is. It is. It's, no, it's Giala yellow. Um, and uh, this is an NHR 75, is it? No, that's no. Uh, 18. 18. So uh, this is pretty. And we've got an F430 Scuderia on the side here. I can say that because it, it says Scuderia and F430, so it's not me being clever. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, and do you use this a lot? I mean, has it stood up the finish? Stood up to it quite well? Uh, they do. Yep, yeah, they're proper car painted and lacquered. Yeah. Um, they're all. Apart from one, all done by Thomas Zane in Germany. Mm -hmm. So cool. the machines were bought, shipped to him. God, so you've got this done in Germany. Oh, yeah. I see. And then he then air, well, airbrushes and some of them are stickers, but generally most of it is airbrushing. And then lacquered over. Yep. And then it's all and then it gets shipped back. God, that's nice. So are you a Ferrari man? I love Ferrari, yeah. 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 Why do you buy an A one then? <laughs> Um, so we're going to put that one down here. Now you can't just be a Ferrari man because this is That was my first machine I got painted. As in your first machine you've ever owned? No, first machine first I got, got painted, painted. yeah. Um, and so these are the golf colours, which are made for, famous by GT40 Le Mans and all the rest of it. Yeah. Although I always think Porsche for some reason when I see this. Is there a reason I'm thinking Porsche? Is it just me? Uh, Porsche has run it quite a lot of Le Mans yeah. as well, more recent times, I would say. That's and then cool. Aston Martin did a whole thing yes. for a few years ago where they run all their cars in the golf colours. What's the name of this blue? Pass. Ah. Baby. Let's go with baby blue. Baby blue. <laughs> It's very cool indeed. Uh, we'll do some close pans and stuff like that because the chances you won't see it from there. Um, I'm being very careful with these because he said if I make a scratch them, he'll kill me. <laughs> um, then we have we, we have a double Swiss fax sort of twin. We've got what, red on red on black and then red on white. Yeah. Is there any reason for that or just because? Uh, I love Swiss fax as a brand. Yeah. Um, and I just they were the first two machines that Thomas actually done for me. Uh, so I have a uh, 15 a large 15 and the 75 that he's done in yeah. six such colours. Yeah. No, it's a very cool looking piece of kit. Um, dare I ask how much it costs to get these done? Mm. Or have you got a significant other who's going to do their nothing if they No, I've got no well, I have a significant other, but it, yeah, she wasn't like, with the party, but um, <laughs> my money. We can afford the mortgage. Yeah, yeah my, but I've got a really shiny car. My money's my money. Um, yeah, over 500 pound each. Woof. That's more than some of these cost me machines cost new, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So that is that. But again, is I just it's yeah. It's I like to be you know, I'm different, and people see them and they yeah they, they do. know. Given machine, given the length of this cable, I'm guessing this is a three, is it? Uh, no, it's a two. It's a two. Yeah, it's just had a cable extension. By oh, you've done. You've made it longer yourself. Yeah. Um, and this is an F40 themed machine. Yeah. Um, and this is very cool. You know what? Are you a fan of the fake carbon fiber? I always look at that and I feel that you know. I thought it was just a bit di a bit different to have them. Yeah, well, plus, well plus that's stock, isn't it? It's to have the carbon fibre effect on the nose. The yes, yeah. yeah. So um, that was actually, I actually had that machine uh, because I knew I was doing an F40. I actually got that machine done. <laughs> and there's actually... Part of the pattern. I've actually, got a machine just yeah, in the car. There was actually, there's actually pictures of me actually working on the car with that 
wow. using that machine on the client's car, yeah. And I note the uh, XL uh, backing plate as well. Yeah. Um, no, that is very cool. What's the L in Peter L? Because on, on Le Bois, that's my middle name. Is it really your middle? I was. Yeah. You see, because on Facebook you're Peter Le Bois Davis. Yeah. And I always thought the, the French of that is the boy, isn't it? Is well, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a bit of a story behind it. So, but well, uh, no, I'm I'm all ears. I want to hear how you got the middle name Le Bois. I was christened with no middle name. Okay. Um, and then when my mum's dad passed away, we was at the funeral or cremation, I should say. And um, as you go outside and you look at the flowers and everything, uh, everybody sort of passed on or given. Mm -hmm. um, we actually worked out he had about seven middle names. Crikey. Yeah. Um, and he was always known as Tim, but mm -hmm. Timothy was actually one of his middle names. Okay. And sad to say, I don't actually remember what his first name is because he was always known as Grandad Tim. Yeah. Um, and then I saw he had a middle name of Le Bois. Mm. Um, and I actually asked my grandma, I said, oh, what's, you know, that's a bit of an unusual middle name. And it actually turned out that when he was born, his dad was actually fighting in the First World War. Wow. In a place in Belgium. Yeah. In a little wooded area that was actually called Le Bois. Ah, so cool. that was where he was when my granddad was born in the First World War. Um, so I asked her if I could take his middle name. So yeah. I changed my name by Depol. Wow. Um, and the plan is... I wanted to go this year, but the plan is actually next year, once we get out of lockdown yeah. properly, hopefully, um, going to take a bit of a road trip and I'm actually going to go to Belgium and actually go there. That would be really cool. Yeah. That's very yeah. cool. No, it's, it's a nice story. That God, it's all got very serious all of a sudden with, with stuff like that. I think it's just a lot of people just have middle names that they might have taken, you know, they've just been passed down through generations or John or Bob or whatever. A34. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just bit different just to have actually yeah, something actually behind it so yeah, a lot of people can't pronounce it they think it's Le Bois or yeah well I, I, I was slightly sort of taken I, Le Bois I thought it was it kind of sounds to a Stephen of Bois who's a great yeah. sort of medievalist anyway we, we could we could go on for a long time but no that's a good story interesting story and totally not what I was expecting um, I thought it was gonna be like you know I was in a bit out once and you know I've got this tattoo on back after you know <laughs> I thought it was gonna be something like that um, moving swiftly on to a little Rupert's hybrid nano short, no, long neck. That's a long neck, that's yeah. A, that's a long neck. Yeah. Um, and this one is done in Welsh and English colours. Is this about unity? Uh, it's family's Welsh. So oh, okay. all my grandma and granddads are all originally from Wales. Gotcha. So my go-karting helmet has got George and the Dragon on the top of it, airbrushed. Nice. Um, so it's just, yeah, again... It means something, isn't it? It's not yeah. just, it's not just it's It's not cool. just a case of it's just been done that way. And again, it's got the trickle on the back. Yeah, um, but it's yeah, it's just uh, something a bit different. Cool little piece of kit, um, and then we get finally to yet another Swiss fact. What is it about Swiss facts that turns you on? You know, Swiss facts is, is going to have a bit of a rejuvenation. Yeah, I've emailed Rich. Back. Rich, you need yeah. to email me back. He hasn't bothered emailing back. Uh, no, he's still he's just typing. He started about three weeks ago. Yeah, and he's just he's he's got to the dear Peter. Yeah, it's you see it's the Lebois. That's the thing. He's, <laughs> he doesn't know how to spell. He's just stuck there like this. Like computer does not compute. But anyway, so that's coming back in. That's exciting times. Um, but what is it? What what is it? The the products, the brand, or is it just everything? Or have you got sort of secret fascination for things Swiss? Like, I mean, I think yeah. I, I, like Tony. I don't. I, I I think it's we all know that the issues that Swiss X have had mm -hmm. in the UK with a certain company. Um, but I wanted to be approved. I wasn't, you know. But then you were then told that you can't actually use the logo because you're not accredited, and it's just. Um, so I have a lot of high-end clients. They like the brand. They like the products. I have the products. Um, I use the products. I just think they're easy to use, mm -hmm. great to use. I generally tend not to really use the only other wax I use is Soft Ninety Nine for. Yeah. More sort. Are of you a Fuso fan? Or are you yeah, using Army? No, it, it can be, I use Fuso, but it can be a bit hard mm -hmm. when it comes to removal. Yeah. If you don't get the timing right, it can get super grabby. There's that sort of middle ground if it's too early or if it's, when you get it just right, it's fine. But the minute that it's sort of a bit early, it can be too grabby. Yeah. Um, but Swiss Wax is just a joy to use. And a lot of people just like the fact of, I mean, Porsche do offer Swiss Wax. Yeah. On their new cars. Yeah, of course. Cool. Um, but yeah, I just... I like the products, I like the branding. No, it's very cool. The branding is exceptionally cool. Yeah. And it is. It's, it's, I'm hoping it's all do very well when it comes back as a sort of a premium brand because we don't really have a kind of a... 
I wouldn't say premium. We've got plenty of premium brands in terms of ceramic coatings. There's nothing but that's luxury. sort of high end up. No, and it does yeah. speak luxury. Yeah. So you rejoin us after a minor technical error, but basically about an hour and a half has passed. We started talking about Swiss facts and how we like to get yeah. our waxing on, and uh, didn't notice that the camera had gone to sleep. So uh, on the basis of the camera had gone to sleep, it probably meant that you would have gone to sleep too. Um, so you've been saved that much. Uh, but all it leaves me to say is, Peter, thank you so much for inviting us over. Pleasure. Uh, he's got a great unit here. I'm loving these machines. It was great to learn about the uh, esoteric background of Le Bois and um, also an insight into a successful business. I mean, we've got so many guys look up to you um, and they will, you know, they'll ask me, how do you, you know, how do these guys do it? And uh, I think the important thing is hard work. Yeah. Keep a level head. Yeah. Do what you do. Don't bother looking around at what everybody else is doing because it's just, it's, it's you know. It's very, it is very hard to get caught up. Yeah. And I've done it myself. Yeah. Um, and I have actually gone through Instagram and places like that and actually removed a lot of people. Yeah. Because you, you, you do end up finding, you do spend a lot of time looking at other people. And it builds tension. You yeah. don't kind of acknowledge it and it does build and it tension. It draws you away from your own business. Yeah. And you've got lots of good detailers around you as well, or, yeah. or should we say high-end detailers and yeah. stuff. Um, and, you know, we're in a very prosperous part of the country here. Um, and as a result, that attracts the kind of the high-end detailing scene. Yeah. So it's really important to focus on your job, your business, your brand, your your and also your standard of work. Yeah, and I think the other thing, one of the, the key things that I sort of um, not pride myself on, but I try to do is I try to um, be honest with the client. Mm -hmm. So I always ask the client, for instance, like a new car, how long are they planning on keeping the new car? Mm -hmm. um, I won't oversell or give them a product just for the sake of it. I have clients that come in that will want a new car detail, and they might have young kids, so they'll be more focused on, um, they're not fussed about having the wheels done, mm, but they'd rather spend the wheel, the interior being done. Mm. Um, some people aren't fussed about the interior, but will want the wheels done, or I'll advise them with particularly AMG brakes mm -hmm. are horrendous, especially the matte black wheels. So I always say that, you know, for ease of clean, you mm -hmm. have to do the wheels. Um, but if someone's only gonna keep the car for a couple of years, there's no point there's no point. seven year coaching no, on it. No, yeah. I, I won't upsell them a coating and say you need to put a five-year coating on it or you need to put a four-year coating on it we can put a three-year coating on it mm -hmm. and that gives you a window of opportunity if you decide to keep after it. the two yeah. years you're going to keep it for a bit longer because you then still got the protection um, so I think it's being honest with the clients finding out exactly what they want and mm -hmm. they actually appreciate that or I turn around and say to them obviously can't at the minute but come down I can talk them through the options I can give them brochures of the coatings mm -hmm. what each coating offers um, and then they can then, from my information and from the brochure's information, make an informed decision. they can make an informed decision themselves as to what they think is best. Yeah. And, and the other side is, well, I noticed because you came for your PVD assessment, you were one of the very first to come for the PVD assessment. January, yeah. Yeah, back in January this year. And uh, that was before even COVID existed, as yeah. far as we were concerned. Yeah, it well, exist, it did but exist. But yeah, yeah, we hadn't heard about it. We were like, nah, it's not going to cause any trouble. Um, and um, I was impressed because I'm at all of the assessment days, so I'm, I'm always kind of watching. I'm not doing the assessing because otherwise it'd be kind of a flawed system. But um, you were very um, meticulous, but you're also very structured and self-disciplined, and that is a sign. I think that's a, a, a big thing, and it should be used as an example, really, for everyone. Is that you came in and you you went quickly, safely, efficiently, and effectively, which is kind of what we're what we're looking for a lot of it, yeah. particularly the the efficiency, the efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Well, no, the efficiency, how effective it was. Right, okay. I don't even know if that word exists, no. but you know what I mean. Um, and also, obviously, health and safety, both from your point of view, your customer's point of view, and any bystander's point of view. Um, but it's that um, process-driven, bing, bang, bosh sort of thing. And I remember doing photos, and normally, when it comes to photographing somebody doing interior, <laughs> you've probably seen some of Peter sort of stretched over a sea app that he was doing at the time. Um, it's, it's easy. Sorry, James, I hope you, broke, you, hope you fixed your switch. <laughs> yeah, you did break James's switch, which was great. And, and you know, I hope, I hope that when we remunerated you for it that you, you felt that was a fair deal. Um, and, um, but no, it's, normally I get plenty of time to photograph them. If somebody's out on the interior, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just wait till they're in the right position. I'll just get the flash right on the interior so it kind of works. And then I turn around and bugger me, you've already finished. You're off doing something else. And I'm like, crap, it was impossible to get photos. So, um, yeah, there's, you know, the answer is that you get successful business by all these different things coming together um, and putting that all together. And this is an example of what you can achieve. So um, it was interesting. We got a call, strange enough, from a college in Wales, and it was an exasperated career advisor. 
and apparently they had this A grade student, absolutely brilliant at everything, got A's, straight A's, all the way through the GCSEs or whatever you get A's, they're not A's anymore are they, they're numbers and oh, uh, references, god knows. Changes every year. But anyway, and she said, um, this coming to the careers advice, and she was like ready for like doctor, lawyer, all of this sort of high end stuff, and the guy just wanted to be, the 16 year old wanted to be a detailer. And she was like, I was trying to say I'm not, you know, you can't make money washing cars, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was like, whoa, hang on. Um, actually, it's a perfectly legitimate career and there's much more to it. She said, what do you need? Just a bucket and a sponge? And I was like, no, there's a lot more to it. And we spent about an hour on the phone going through the career opportunities. And by the end of it, while she would still prefer to be a lawyer, I think, um, the, uh, you know, she was in a much stronger position to advise it for the next generation. Yeah. Um, and understanding. Yeah. And realise that it is a proper job and it's not, you know, it's not a, a kind of a, a fall in, fall out job. It's a career. Um, no, it is a very hard industry, well, mm. industry, it is a very hard career or to, for what we do, to explain what we do to people. Yes. Yeah, um, I, mean, I just say we rub ourselves against cars. I just tell people I just wash cars. Yeah. It's just, it's, it, to, to get into the technical terms and to try and... Didn't your Tinder profile say you were a high, highly qualified doctor? I'll shut that down now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but anyway, so it's an interesting, interesting topic, and it's been uh, uh, an eye-opening experience being here. It's great seeing these clever machines. I have seen these in photos, I have to admit, before, but they're very, very smart in the in the flesh. Uh, and of course, this rather smart Range Rover behind us, which I'm a little bit jealous of. Thank God I came in a Subaru, otherwise I'd probably try and take <laughs> this. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. It's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And uh, we will catch up with you soon, I'm sure. There you go. That's quite manly. Yeah. <laughs>